is worthy, whether it's rainy, snowing, sunny, it just doesn't matter. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and worthy of your shout of praise. So, everything you got, if that's the best you got, church, I, I don't know. It, whether it's, a, you know, the Bible says, I know you know it, I know you've heard it a million times. I refuse to let the rocks cry out. And the word says that if you don't praise him, the word, I mean, the, the, the word, the word says that if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. I dare, I dare let a rock, an inanimate object that has no breath in it, to be louder in its praise than in what I've got to give. Are you kidding me right now? Listen, it doesn't matter what's in front of you. It just doesn't matter what's in front of you. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There is nothing, nothing, nothing that can let me keep my praise caught up inside. I might be 411, but I refuse to let a rock give him what he deserves. I refuse. Church, one more time, give your God a praise this morning. Give a shout. Hallelujah. Woo, he is worthy this morning. He is so worthy. He is my king. And if he's your king, well, if you could take a seat. Listen, I pray you may seat, have a seat. I cannot talk this morning. You know, sometimes, you know, I love when the word says, I don't know the exact scripture, but the word says sometimes we don't have what we need in our time with God. We, we can't get a prayer out, but it says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you don't have the words. When we just come into his presence, whether it's a, if it's just a silence, whether it's a word, but always, always, always. Whatever praise that we can find on our tongue, even when our circumstances don't allow us to get a praise, hallelujah, you know it, you feel it, you know it's the highest praise. And just when, you're, when your mind says, I'm going through this thing that doesn't allow me to get a praise, just say the word hallelujah. He is worthy. He is everything. Sometimes we don't need to say a word. We just need to come and tell him and remind him who he is to us. He knows who he is. He knows what's going on in your life. You don't have to say a word. But hallelujah. It almost uh, turns the dial in on the radio when you're trying to find your favorite station. Well, hallelujah puts you right in tune with the king that has a plan for it all. Hallelujah. You can say it with any amount of syllable. Pastor was talking about your cadence and the way you speak. Sometimes you just need to get a little swag with your hallelujah to remind God that he has what you need when you need it. Hallelujah. He hears the praise of his people. And it's got the fingerprint of your name. And he knows right where to find you. He's in tune right to your need. And he knows. He already knows. I got you, baby girl. Just hang on. Just keep praising. I got you right where you are. God, we thank you. that You are the God that knows it all. God, you've got the whole world in your hand. Lord God, we are so grateful that we serve a God, not that, not that is a statue in a corner that we hope, we hope, what could he possibly do, but a living God that meets us right where we are, in the midst of our heartbreak, in the midst of our joy, in the midst of our, of our, of our weakness in our body, God, right where we are, you meet us, Lord God. You are so real to us. You are so real in us. You are so everything that we will ever need, God. If we could just live lives that give that glory to you that you deserve because you are that God. Oh, what a world we will live in. 
God, that we would be the example to this world that lacks you, Lord God. Let us be the living epistle, the stories that are written before men to give a true life, living example of a God that loves them more than life. God, we bless your name. You are so worthy, God. Have your way with us today. I pray that whatever word you have in your pastor today, that it is a fire that burns underneath us that we cannot sit still. Lord God, that when we leave here, if we leave here the same that we missed your heart, God. If we leave here the same way we came in and heard the truth of your word, if we leave the same that we missed your instruction, God. We don't want to miss you, God. We don't want to miss your instruction. We don't want to miss you when you pass by, God. That we would leave here making an impact greater than when we came in. Have your way today, God. We love you. In your name we pray and God's people said amen and amen and amen. And it will be done. Mm. I don't have a whole lot of announcements today. They've been up on the screen. If you want to give, there's baskets in the front, on the walls in the front or back. There's a QR code you can pull up on your phone. Listen, God knows. God knows exactly where you at. He knows exactly what you have and what you don't have. God, we thank you that he gives us the ability to do and be. So uh, if you need to give, you know how to do that. Um, we are doing, speaking of, we were talking about, blessed be the name of the Lord. Wednesday night, we just kicked off Wednesday night a Bible study, uh, and we're studying the names of God. And there are, we're, the study has 52 names. We're like, my goodness, how, how are you going to get through 52 names of God? We got all the time in the world on a Wednesday night. Um, so if you're interested in joining us, um, let me know. Um, there is a book. Uh, I'm out of books, but um, there's a few of us that come. We eat. Um, and then we dig into the word, and we just have a wonderful time because God's word is holy, his name is mighty, and if I can get 52 ways to call on my my man, God, my my savior, my king, my then I'm going to be there in Bible study. So if you're interested in see me, otherwise, my man, God, I don't, I don't know what's my man, my man, Jesus. Ah, uh, my king. Right I don't ever want to be irreverent <laughs> to the one who makes it all possible. <laughs> I got issues today. <laughs> Pastor, are you ready? I should probably just get off this this microphone right now and just go sit down. Unless you're going to beatbox a little bit. No, uh, I'm not. I'll save that for another day. Yeah. But amen. A uh, amen. You ain't got a little rapping on <laughs> City Reach. The Bible says, do not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Can someone please say amen? <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's, I find myself challenged this morning. If I get, yep, if I get the center lights, that'd be great. That way I can see some faces out there. But I find myself challenged this morning by that very scripture because I find that we, we, we have things that come out of our mouth many times. And a lot of times what we say does not, does not always coincide with what we do. Let, let me help you a little bit with that, okay? See, if I was to keep my mouth closed, you could never call me a liar. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me. But the minute I open up my mouth, the minute I open up my mouth and say something, if I was to turn around and say, 
as an example, we know I'm going to start with a lie. I'm going to help you. I'm going to start with, I'm, I'm going to say I'm a good person. Right? So you, I would turn around, I, I would make that statement, and you would look at me and go, I believe you. You're a good person. And then you find out that I just stole from Walmart. Uh, how good does that make me? I, I, was, I was okay until I said something. Right? Because then my actions, my actions then, my actions went against what came out of my mouth. Recently, my son and I, we've had this conversation. My son is 22 years old. If you don't know him, he, he's, um, I can give you his entire resume. It's, it's something that I'm very proud of, uh, though I find myself that I had very little to do with it because if it were not for the grace of God and, and for God's glory, my son was able to accomplish his things that he accomplished. He was valedictorian at Reading High. He did go, he did, he's about ready to graduate from an Ivy League in Philadelphia called University of Pennsylvania. He is already, already has a job lined up to start in July and he hasn't even graduated. Come on, somebody. But you, mm. I'm just, for those of you that know him, it's nothing new. I, you know, I, I brag about my son all the time. Uh, I also brag about my church. So I brag about you. Um, uh, Paul gives us instructions about, you know, bragging and stuff. And I, I keep it centered on Christ. I like to brag about Jesus. Come on, somebody. Um, and so, so let me, I, I regress a little bit, so let me get back on target. So my son turns around, and we're having this conversation. My wife and I, we, we afterwards ended up having more conversations about, about what, he, what he said. And what he said may not line up with what I received. Do you know there's times that people say something and you receive it in a different way? Do you know that if you come into this place not ready to receive from me, that you're probably not going to get a whole lot? It makes sense, right? If, if, if you came into here, and then and, and thank God for, listen, if you're visiting here, God bless you for visiting. Welcome to City Reach Church. If you're back and haven't been here in a while, welcome back. Uh, yeah, that's praiseworthy a little bit. More than just a ring. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, let's do something here, you know. Um, but he said something to me that, that, or we were in this conversation and what I received versus what he said, um, uh, we were talking about things and my son made it sound like I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, the word's not critical. Ah, intolerant. And I'm very intolerant. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, I don't think I am. I don't care what kind of alphabet soup you want to identify with. I'm okay with it. You go do, you do you, boo, right? You want to roll this way, you want to roll that way. I'm cool. You identify if you want to be, if you want to sit in your car, in your garage, and go room, room, and call yourself a Mercedes, go ahead, Mercedes. I'm okay, right? Hey, we want to talk to you now. I, you know, I, I don't. I, it doesn't bother me. It's not that I don't care. It just, doesn't bother me. As a matter of fact, why don't you come? I'd love to embrace you. I'd love to give you an opportunity to come into a place where I believe you can feel the love of God, regardless of what you believe. I believe that right here at City Reach Church, you can feel the love of God. And you can feel the presence of God. You can feel the love that comes from other people in this place. I don't, regardless of how you want, come on in here. We'll show you the love of God. Somebody please shout amen because I ain't by myself. And while we were having this conversation, I kind of like, ow. Because I find myself to be a very accepting person. At least I thought. And then I realized in our conversation, oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bless you. My issue isn't with people out there. My issue is with people in here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to lose half of you today, okay? So, um. It was nice knowing you. God bless you as you go. Uh, I know you're not coming back next week, but I'm still going to love you. Amen? <laughs> I have a problem with the church. I don't have a problem with people out there. You know why? Because they're, stay they're staying true to their nature. Hello? Uh, my, my, my mom, I, I was going through something one time with my brother, um, I hope he's not watching today. Um, but I was going through some things with my brother one time. My brother did some things that, that at the time when my mother was still alive, 
And he, he started doing it. And I was like, what are you doing? Don't you know how this is going to break your, your mother's heart? Right? Don't you know that if she finds out about this, this is this is this is this is not this is gonna be traumatic. This is gonna be the kind of drama that you know that make the headlines kind of you get, you gotta stop what you're doing. And I was so distressed and I was so upset that I couldn't believe that my brother was doing this thing. I'm not gonna tell you what the thing is, but it was a bad thing. Hello? So I I mean I, I was I mean I went to prayer, I fasted, I cried, I told my wife I can't believe this stuff. I finally called my spiritual mom. I always gotta wait till the end. I, Finally call my spiritual. Isn't that isn't that what we do? We always wait till we call somebody. <laughs> Finally call my spiritual mom. I needed some wisdom and said, Mama, I can't, I can't believe my brother's doing this. And mom and mom's gonna be so upset when she finds out she finds out I can't believe he's doing this to the family. Da, 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 da. And she said, Baby. Now see if you know my spiritual mom, you know that when she uses that tone. If you know, if you know Pastor Pam Johnson, and she uses that tone, and she goes, Baby, let me shut up. She said, baby. And this may not be a profound, this may not be profound to you, but at the time it was so profound to me. She said, baby, sinner's going to do what a sinner's going to do. But, baby, why do you think he's going to do the right thing, the righteous thing, the moral thing, when he still don't know Jesus? What are you saying? Are you, are you saying that that people are going to follow their character when they haven't been shown, when they haven't been taught, when they haven't been filled by the Holy Spirit to do the right? Oh, my goodness. I'm going to tell you that right then and there, my love for my brother just exploded. The grace from my brother. Don't get me wrong. I still told him that he was wrong. I still told him he needed to get it right. I still told him that I don't care if you saved or unsaved. What you're doing is wrong. Sinners are going to do what sinners are going to do. So back to my story of my son. I don't have a problem with the people on the outside because they just follow their nature. I have a problem with the church. Because we say this and then we do that. We talk about, we, we talk about holiness and righteousness. And and grace and mercy. You can go ahead, list them all down. List them all down. We talk about forgiveness. We talk about, we talk about, but, but then we go and do something else. Words that come out of our mouth that have such importance and significance. The words that come out, I, I mean, and, and honestly, I, I, I deal with words all the time because words, the Bible says that words, it, it's life and death. Is in the power of the tongue. Wow. So I'm going to deal with a four-letter word today because I know we deal with four-letter words all the, uh, all the time, don't we? Oh, no, 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 I'm not talking about that four-letter word. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. We don't know yet, right? I'm going to deal with a four-letter word. No, 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 it's not that one either. It's not that one. It's not love because immediately you wanted to go to love, didn't I saw you. Yeah. No, I'm going to deal with another one. And, and by the way, before I reveal what that four letter word is, I'm going to tell you that most of today's message isn't for you. It's not. You can take it. If you get it and you receive it, take it with you and share it with somebody. But I'm going to tell you right now, this word's for me. I, I kind of almost hope I, I should probably send everybody home right now and just put a mirror in front of myself and put a camera on there because I'm just going to be talking for me. Because I don't know about you, but I find that, that one of the ugliest four-letter words that I've encountered is called work. It's called work. Right? Right? It's work. <laughs> oh, man, it's Monday tomorrow. Where do we got to go? Work. I, I, by the way, if you don't know this, I am a, uh, they, call, they, they like to call us a um, uh, bivocational. Uh, that's the correct term to use for pastors that hold down a job and also and also hold down a church. They call us bi bivocational. At one time, I had somebody actually call me a part-time pastor. <laughs> it was fun, right? It's funny, ain't it? I'm a part-time pastor. 
Let's say, for the grace of God, you will, I will not put you in the ground right now. Hallelujah. Part-time pastor. I deal with four-letter words all the time. But this four-letter word called work, I'm going to have to dive in here just for a second and realize that ever since creation, God invented, it, it, ever since creation, God invited us into work. Ears, hearts. Father, here we are with our ears open, our hearts ready. I pray, Lord God, that for today and today alone, Lord God, for we are glad for this day that you called today, that the words that would come out of my mouth, Lord God, that they would be seasoned by the Holy Spirit, that they would be translated, Lord God, and transferred into the minds and hearts of your people today to be the seed that is necessary to deal with whatever life has for us today. Oh, bless your people today. Give us the ears to hear what the Spirit of God would have to say. Let us be practical about the use of it. In Jesus' name, and God's people said. I want to be practical about the Word of God today. The Word of God is so powerful. The Bible says that it is so, so sharp. See, when you, when you translate Bible and, and, you, and you hear Bible translations, you, you think, you know, they use, you use very religious terms like, Sharper than a double-edged sword. How many of you ever held a double-edged sword? I have. <laughs> I, if it was translated today, I think it would be, I think it might even, I think it might translate to say, sharper than any laser imagined. Because if you read it, the Bible, the Bible talks about what it separates. What it separates. That's how sharp it is. Oh, but I regress. That's not where I'm going. But since the beginning, God, God has invited us into work. As a matter of fact, if you turn to Gen Genesis 2.15, it says, The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to, to work. Uh, am I, am I, is my PowerPoint up there? I didn't know if I was still in the Pentecostal church. I wasn't getting any feedback. The Bible says that God put him in the Garden of Eden to work. And to take care of it. And Proverbs it gives us wisdom and principles and, and these kinds of things that revolve around work and how it's applied to, to work. Actually, when you think about work, work is more than just the job that pays you. Are, are you following me? What, what, uh, we, we, when we think about work, we think about a paycheck, right? The wages of sin. We think about, we think about wages. We think about what are we going to get? For the work we put in. That's why it says that the wages of sin is death. Because the work that you're putting into life. Can lead you to death. But thank God for the grace of God. And the gift of God. Well I, I, again I, I go in a direction that I don't want to go. I just I get happy when I think about the blood of Jesus. Anybody else out there? I get happy when I start thinking about the forgiveness of God. That came through the shed blood of Jesus. I get happy when I think about the resurrection power. That gives me oh it gives me hope. To know that there's still a hope for tomorrow until the rapture. Come on, somebody. I get a little, I get a little sideways when I start to preach and I start thinking about how good God is. Hey, Amen. I'm just by myself here. I told you. This ain't for you. This is just for me. So leave my mirror up here. Work. I want to share this with you because, like I said, I want us to see work in a different light. I want us to see it in a different way. Work is how we provide for our families. Work is how we feel, how we feel self-worth and accomplishment. Work is how we glorify God. Work is worship. You got to put work in. You, you got to put your work in. If you don't put work in, how are you going to glorify God? Work. If you don't put the work in, how are you going to provide for your family? Immediately I say, provide for your family. You're thinking, dollar sign, dollar sign. No, I'm talking about provide for your, for your family spiritually. I'm talking about provide for your family emotionally. I'm talking, listen, there is nothing more important than a ministry of presence to be with your family. Do you know that's work? With everything else that is taken up and buying your time, work. 
Kevin and I preached. Kevin just got back from a, vac- from a little mini vacation that he does yearly with, with his daughter. Took her down to Disney. And, and, and he, and, and Kevin and I, and if I overstep, you can, you can call me out later, okay? And I asked him how to go. He said, it was wonderful. He said, we got, we got to go here and there. And we laughed. And we talked about stuff. And we just spent time together. But you got to put in the work. If you can't put, if you don't put in the work, you can't go to Disney. Come on, somebody. No? Hello? <laughs> you can't go on vacation if you ain't got a job. Yeah. Yeah, nobody want to talk now, right? I didn't get a single amen on that one. Work. Work. When we accomplish the tasks that belong to work, we feel accomplished. When, 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 if you got a to-do list and, and you check off a to-do list, you look back and go, yeah, I got it. at least I got one thing done today. <laughs> to-do lists work. Do you know that work is worship? Did you know sometimes it takes work to worship? Sometimes you don't feel like it, but you know you got to get it. Sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you just have to. And most importantly, we get to. Anybody still tracking with me? Last week, Pastor Joy did an amazing job talking about the fear of the Lord. I went back and listened to that message a few times. That's because every single time I stopped it, I had to go back and start it over. (laughs) If you need any of our uh, messages, they're they're on the YouTube channel. Go ahead and get out there. See this church. Um, they're on our Facebook. Sometimes the Facebook skips a little bit. So if you're watching now and the video is skipping on Facebook, go ahead and go to the YouTube channel so you can still get it live. She unpacked, last week she unpacked this concept and made it clear that God's intention is not that we would be afraid of him, but rather that we could have reverence for him. That we would have reverence for him. For him. Understanding his magnificent and awesome power as the creator of the universe. As many of you already know, I um, I get caught up sometimes on social media. Um, okay, a lot of times. Quit looking at me like that. Um, I, 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 I'm learning stuff on TikTok. It's not all good sometimes, but hey, you know, I learned how to mash potatoes with a skin on it through TikTok. Y'all out here peeling potatoes. I learned a way I ain't got to peel my potatoes to get mashed potatoes with the skin. Mashed potatoes with the skin on, the skin on because we lazy and talk, right? No? Y'all don't know how to cook. Come on, talk to me, cooks. Right? Anybody? Listen, when you make mashed potatoes, uh, how much butter do you use? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> that is the correct amount of butter to use when you make mashed potatoes. A lot. Okay? A lot. Anyway, so um in this uh in one of these in one of these uh, short videos that I saw, uh and I'm not gonna be able to, to do a, a good job with it because if not I'd be a TikTok content creator myself, but I'm not. So he uh, um they said um if your children don't fear you. You're doing something wrong. Now, that's controversial. That, that, that's controversial right there. The fact that I even said it already put some of you on edge. You're already on the What do you mean? I want my kids to fear me. I want them to love me, right? Amen. Come on, somebody. Right? Is, is, isn't, that, isn't that the direction that we've, we've turned to? I don't want my children to, to fear me. I want them to love me. But isn't it interesting then when we talk about Bible and we talk about the fear of the Lord, we're referring to reverence. Can I also add in there, would you, would you allow me to add in there that there wouldn't be a whole lot of reverence if there wasn't some fear? Legitimate fear? I mean, if we go back to, to Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments and, and God is giving out and God is giving out and ten, is beginning to speak to the children of Israel. And, and what do the children turn around and say to Moses? Oh, don't. Guys, if he does, we're surely going to die. What 
here there. I mean, it was lightning and thunder and all kinds. It wasn't, it wasn't like, it, listen, if you watch uh, the Ten Commandments, the old one, the Charleston Hessen one, and, 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 and the of God and Moses, Moses and, 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 and it's so beautiful. No. It was fearful. It, 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 scary is the right word, right? Uh, we had a, a young man in one of our Bible classes. We were, we were going through the Bible and, and we were talking about some things that were happening as far as some of the battles of the Bible. And, and, and this young man turned around and described God. And he said, God is savage. I wonder, who do you want near you? Do you want, what kind, what kind of friend, what kind of person do you want as your ride or die? Can I use that vernacular? Do you understand what I'm saying, ride or die? Did you understand? Does everybody understand when I say ride or die, what I'm talking about? Okay, so, 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 so who are you going to call on when you need backup? Okay? If you're in trouble, who do you want to show up? Do, do you want, do you want, do you want the, the cute little angels that we talk about during Valentine's? You know, we get ready for Valentine's to show up. We know that those ain't real. But is that who you want to show up with a little bow and arrow and a diaper? Right? Is, isn't that how we portray uh, uh, the Cupid? Cupid, right? Cupid, right? Is that who you want to show up? Or do you want the commander of all the angels? The commander of God's host to show up with all of his glory and all of his might. With a, oh my God, that can tear down and build up. Who do you want to show? Who do you want your ride or die to be? <laughs> who do you want? Do, do, do you want the, the nice pastor, the soft spoken pastor that's going to hold you and, 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 and coddle you? Do you, Pastor Joy? Pastor Cherie, hello? Right? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, sometimes that's who you need, right? Sometimes you need somebody to go ahead and hold you and, and coddle you. Um, but if you're on the street, are you going to call Cherie or, or Pastor Joy? Or are you going to call me? I might forget I'm saved when I show up, but I'll show up. Come on now. I'll show up. I'll roll up. <laughs> Hello? I'm going to deal with Jesus, but we're all going to deal with Jesus. What's that? Give me a quote. Oh, give me a hug. <laughs> Who do you want? Fear of the Lord. However, I regress again because I'm not talking about the fear of the Lord. I'm, I really want to talk about work. Work. It takes work. It takes work to build your character. It takes work for somebody. Listen, there, there, there are people out there. My son, my, my son, 22 years old. Get ready to graduate, all this other kind of stuff like I told you before. He calls and texts his mom every single day. Or she nags him. I don't know which one it was. But they're in contact every day, right? Gets a tattoo the other day and puts mom on it. I'm like, where's dad? Eat boppy. Right? He found himself in trouble at 3 o'clock in the morning. Who do you think he called first? He didn't take, no. <laughs> Mom ain't going to handle it. <laughs> Mom will be there. I'm ride or die. I'm ride or die. I'm not calling. Listen, if, 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 if we had a situation here uh, about a year ago in church and it needed, it needed some handling. Um, it had the potential to get very ugly, uh, unfortunate type of situation. But who do you think who do you think decided to take up take up arms 
and be my armor bearers going out the door. Well, who do you think it was? It was Kevin and it was Evans. That's who rode with me. And I appreciate the ladies in the church. and Thank you for being here. But thank you for not trying to be that. Right? Because you might have got, you might have showed up on the scene and been like, can I give him a hug? No, you can't give him a hug. Am I making sense? But it takes work. It takes work to build that type of character, good or bad. Okay? It takes work to, to build up a bad character. I know. I know Kevin in the back. I know that if something goes down, I dial that number, it's going to be a matter of, hey, I need you. He's going to say, what's up? I'm going to say, I need you now. And he'll be there as fast as his Harley gets him there. Right? The and, if, or buts will come later. Later he will say, uh, you know, CJ, I was stupid. You should have got yourself up, caught up in that. Right? But it takes work. And God created us for work. If you go back to, to Genesis 2 and you read it, you, you, you'll have to agree that work has been with us since the very beginning. Work was present before the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Eden, and continued after Adam and Eve were, just, were, were expelled from the Garden. Work was in the beginning. With all that in mind, you have to say and have to agree that work is fundamental. Work is instrumental. If, and I, I'm looking out here right now, and I can tell that most of you are already familiar with the creation story in Genesis 1 and 2. And, and you know that, and, and you know it took God six days, right? It took, why could it just take one? Hmm. I'll ask him when I get there. We, we see that before human beings even, even enter the equation, God was already at work. Before we had breath of life, God was already at work. He even gives us this blueprint of following the structure of work in our work week. He, he, he lined it out for us by doing it himself. He said six days we should work and one day off, we we'll call it a Sabbath. And by the way, the Sabbath isn't just to watch the Super Bowl. Come on, somebody. Because next week's the Super Bowl. And you Eagles fans better be up in here. Right? And the Chiefs fans should be up in here too. Hey! Anyway, I'm not a football fan, so I can talk about it. Many believe, and in theory, holds true today, is that that was the rhythm that Adam and Eve kept after creation. And like I said, unfortunately, Adam and Eve were eventually expelled from the garden. And it was through this process that working changed. It was the expulsion from the garden that work changed into a bad work. It was through sin that work changed into a bad thing. Work was a good thing. Now work has taken on an understanding of it being a bad thing, even a profanity. Genesis 3.17, it begins, uh, later on there it says, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you will take it. For dust you were, and dust you will return. It was the fall of man that created this, this, this change in translation when it comes to work. This is how, th this is the work we now know. This is how we do it. It can be difficult, it can be a grind, and there are times for all of us that we just don't want to do it. How many of you woke up in the morning going, like, oh, man, I got to go to work? How many of you then decided to call off? Hey, don't tell me. I don't want to Your boss might be listening. We'd rather do some other things than actually go to work 
or do the work. And this is where the conflict occurs. This is where your message begins. Work is fundamental to our existence. And yet, it's also a difficult part of our existence. Proverbs gives us a whole bunch of wisdom on how to deal with work. How to do it and how not to do it. And most of the instruction revolves around the idea, number one, being diligent. Being diligent. Diligence. Diligence is defined as careful, persistent work or effort. Like I said, I got the mirror in front of me because the first thing that my boy turned around and said to me when I walked in here today was, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in the gym in two weeks. <laughs> Diligence is a way of working, which means that laziness, idleness, and apathy are opposite ways of working with diligence. You can't be lazy and be diligent. You can't be idle and be diligent. So here are just a few uh, verses out of Proverbs that deal with diligence. Proverbs 10.4. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Um, you can't make no money if you don't go to work. Hello? I don't like that, I know. You can't pay your bills if you don't go to work. You can't expect to pay your bills. Oh, I want this and I want that. Well, guess what, boo? You can't have it because you didn't go to work today. I ain't talking to none of y'all. I'm looking at the cat. Because if I look at y'all, then you're going to think I'm talking to you. Proverbs 12, 24 says, Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. <laughs> forced labor. You know why it's forced labor? Because you got to do it. You have to do it. And you don't want to do it. So now you're forced to do it. Proverbs 13, 4 says, a sluggard's appetite is never filled. But the desires of the diligent are always satisfied or fully satisfied. There seems to be this theme here that we're working with. And it dil as diligence is contrasted with laziness. Satisfaction is contrasted with want. I might summarize all of this by saying this. It is wise to work diligently and foolish to be lazy. Let me say it again for you. It is wise to work diligently and foolish to be lazy. Somebody send me that text tomorrow around 2 o'clock when I want to take my nap. Amen? Because that's what happens. We know what we got to do, and we decide not to do it because we can put it off till later. Guess what? Procrastination is a sign of laziness. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. For many of us in the room, we understand this reality all too well. It's impossible to accomplish your goals apart from hard work. If the goal has any type of significance for you. If this is your goal, if this is where you want to go, if this is the direction you want to go, it got, listen, you can even get, super, listen, I haven't even started talking about Jesus yet, but let me just talk about in the natural. If you have any goals that you want to achieve and you have a reason why you want to achieve those goals, it's going to take work. If you want to be a pastor, guess what? It's going to take work. If you want to be a CEO, guess what? It's going to take work. If you want to own your own business, guess what? It's going to take work. If you want your marriage to be successful, guess what? It's going to take <laughs> Yeah, you're lying. <laughs> But anything worthwhile is going to take. Work. 
Even things like integrity, honesty, righteousness require effort and intentionality. It doesn't happen by accident. You have to want to do it. I heard, I heard the coach from the Phoenix Suns tell his players this. Everything you want is on the other side of heart. Everything you want is on the other side of heart. It's not on the other side of easy. But what you really want, what you really desire, the Bible said that God has given us the desires of our, well, he puts our, those desires in there. What you really want, what, you really, what, what you're really after, is on the other side of heart, never on the other side of easy. Because if it was easy, then everybody can do it. Dave Ramsey's, he says, if you will live like no one else now, you can live like no one else later. Blows my mind. I, I, I'm going to say this, but then I'm going to look back at what I was doing in my 20s. But I wish I was in my 20s and somebody was giving me this advice. Right? I wish I was in my 30s and somebody was giving me this advice. Right? And then I think about what I was doing. Was I really ready to listen? I may not have been ready to listen to wisdom. So if you're here and you're younger than me, let's get together and let's listen. What both these men are saying is that wisdom, the wisdom found in Proverbs, what wisdom says in Proverbs about work is absolutely true. Even more so, what God told Adam and Eve in the garden is still true. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. If you want to eat good, then let's work hard. Uh, we all want to eat good, but we don't want to put the work in, right? <laughs> we, 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 want a, we want a church fellowship meal and somebody else cook the pork. Come on, somebody. No? Just me and you. Because I don't want to cook it. I'll be honest. I want somebody else to cook it. That one really didn't go over really good. Um, go back to my notes. I'm going to scratch that one out of my notes. Let me get back to it. Work is both fundamental. Both, is, both fund, is a fundamental part of our lives. And it's also a difficult part of our lives. The truth is, we won't always like it. But we need to be persistent. You're not going to like it. But it's in, the, it's in the little things that we don't want to do, that we need to do. Persistence is then defined. Persistence then is defined as, as a firm, obstinate, continuous continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty opposition. What time do you get up in the morning, Kevin? Tomorrow. Yeah. 4.30. At 4.30 when you wake up, I want you to go ahead and text me persistent. Why? Because it's got to be Obstinate. It's got to be. It's got to be in spite of difficult opposition. My most difficult opposition at four thirty in the morning. Can I tell you what it is? I'm going to share this. In the middle of winter, you know what it is? Is that warm bed? Ah, no. Staying in bed because it's warm there. It's fifteen degrees out there this morning. Where do you think I wanted to be? Not here. Is work always easy? Is work always fun? Is work always enjoyable? No. Can it be? Yes. Can you just enjoy the fight? Yes. Can you enjoy the struggle? Because you know what the struggle is going to bring out in you? Absolutely. Persistence is the key to getting it done. It's the key to hearing the words. That will eventually come to us. Well done, my good and what? Faithful. Good. Faithful. It takes persistence to be faithful. It's the key to that reward. Whether it's here or in heaven. I believe that God knows we need work. 
I believe that. I also believe that God knows some of us, okay, all of us, need hard work. We need it. We may not desire it. How much water should we drink a day? For a normal human being throughout the day, how much water should we drink? Come on. Half what? Half of my what? That's a whole lot of water. You know how much I weigh? Half of my weight in, in ounces? 220 pounds. 120. What? Hey, stop telling my weight. Uh, okay, so if you're around 225 pounds, you, that means you're going to drink a gallon of water a day with me. If you half my weight, 130 pounds, Right? 120, 115 pounds. That means you're going to drink a half a gallon of water. If you're somewhere in between that, that means you're drinking somewhere between a half a gallon of water and a full gallon of water a day. How many of you are doing that? Coffee don't count. <laughs> wow. God bless you all. I did a challenge one time. It was a 75-day challenge. And I tried drinking a gallon of water a day for 75 days. I spent more time in the urinal than I did in any place else. I used to have to, I used to have to, I used to have to tell the worship leader up here, go a little bit longer because I gotta go pee. I used to end my messages faster because I had to go pee. I think that's funny. Where was I? I'm almost done. But I believe that God does know that we need hard work. He knows that without it, we'd become lazy, we'd become idle, and we'd become distracted. If you're easily distracted, it's probably because you ain't doing hard work. If you're easily distracted and doing other things that you know you shouldn't be doing, I guess I ain't talking to you. There you go. Another TikTok. Another TikTok. Oh, that's a good one. I like that one. Share that one. I'll even, send, I'll even send that one to my wife. <laughs> Why? Because I ain't working hard. If I'm spending more time here doing this. I ain't working. Let alone working hard. Work. Working hard. Satisfaction in a job well done is actually a real thing. By the way, this is work. This is work. The amount of work that goes into the week to just spend 40 minutes up in here. Okay, an hour and 40 minutes. Um, up here. Big work. But you know what? At the end of it, when I sit around some folks that, 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 that that know how to review what I do, and we're able to have an honest conversation about how this went, there's a satisfaction of, 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 of hitting the mark. And you do, it feels good. Because it should. Because it should. So, so, so I believe that God, God knows this. And he knew this from the very beginning when he wove it into our existence and into our character. We must. It's not an option. We must. It's not even a choice. We must. It's not even by faith. We must. It must be by fact. You must know it. You must transcend the idea. This idea. That God is a mission. That God is a mission. See, a lot of people will turn around and say, oh, you need to believe. Well, believe leaves room for doubt. I'm telling you as a matter of fact that God is all-knowing. Omniscient. I'm being omniscient. It, the definition of omniscience is the state of knowing 
everything. State of knowing everything. You can't get into a debate with people about whether or not God knows everything. Because there's no debate. I'm, I'm telling you that God knows everything as well as I know that water is wet. Well, what happens, Pastor, if, if the water freezes? It'll still be wet. <laughs> I'll just turn up the heat. Hello? I think, therefore, I am is this idea of, 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 of just knowing that of, of, you've got to go beyond that and know that God knows everything. We trust God. We trust that God knew what he was doing when he created the universe. We trust that God knew what he was doing when he created you, when he created your friend down the street, when he created your mama, your daddy, and your baby. God knew and knows. See, we can't forget that part either. We, we can't just put God in the past tense because God is eternal. Eternal before we understood what eternity is and eternal after you understand, if ever, understand what eternity is. God created eternity. He didn't just create time. He created eternity. Wait a minute. So that means that God is outside of eternity? Yes. That's why sometimes when people start getting into conversations about what's going to happen, what's going to happen, all that other kind of stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's nice. But guess what? God already saw it. <laughs> Right? God already knows exactly what I am going to do right after I leave this platform. He knows exact. I don't know if I'm going to go to Taco Bell or, uh, or Bojangles. Hello? But God does because he already saw it done. Messes with you, don't it? I'm sharing this with you so that work, regardless of how we feel about it, was created by God for us to do and for his glory. And though work can be difficult, and there are definitely seasons when work can just be monotonous, work can be tiring, work can be just, why bother? And yet, we need to do it for his glory. For his glory. And in all of that, please know, that you're not alone in doing it. Because he sent his Holy Ghost to be that comfort and to empower you to do the thing that you don't want to do. Don't tell me. I tell my kids all the time. I tell them, okay, I need you to go ahead and do this. I need you to jump in this way. I need you to turn the body this way. I need you to reach like this. I need you to do this. Like... And they look at me and say, Coach, I can't. No, 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 no. Don't tell me what you can't do. Just do it as I said to do it. A lot of times God's telling, giving us the same instruction. Stop telling me what you can't do. My orthopedic surgeon after my hip replacement said I will never be able to, um, to squat below 90 degrees. I'm almost, my butt's almost touching my heels right now. Tell me. Oh, your hip will only last uh, 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 10 years. Okay, then give me another one in 10 years. Hello? I told you I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me today. One of the hardest working, persistent, and focused characters of the New Testament is this man named Paul. Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote most of the New Testament. Signs, wonders, miracles. His salvation was radical. His knowledge before salvation was amazing. And he worked hard. The Bible records him as also being a tent maker as he was planting churches. And he says in Philippians, he said he declared, he declares his dependency on God by saying, I can do all things through him. I've been beat up. I've been cast out. I've been put in prison. I've been, 
oh, I've been spit on. I've been, even the people that said they love Jesus don't love me. But I can do it. I can do it. Just as God supplies seed to the sower and food for the sparrow and sunshine for the flowers. Y'all love that. Y'all love that uh, uh, last series we were in the rooted, right? I wish I had my little plant right here to show you. How many of you, how many, how many of your plants still growing? Right? He will also supply all that you and I need to accomplish the work that he has assigned to us. For you church people, for all the work that he's called you to do. Hello? Because we like using words like being called, right? By the way, you don't have, the, the, the truth, I'm, I'm going to lose you here. The truth is, you know, we use this word being called to, but I'm going to tell you something. If God assigned you work, you can't deny the word. You can't call in sick for work. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you can't go on disability because you <laughs> he assigned it to you. You got to do it. Called. I didn't answer my calling until no. He assigned it to you. You better get to work. Well, I can't do it right now. Then you got to. There, there are too many of us that have received the word from God to do something or assigned a, a calling to us that we have. Waited because we just we're not there. You're not there yet. You never will be there yet. Just do the work. Start doing the work now. God called you to be a pastor. Then start being a pastor now. Don't bother with the title. It'll come later. It'll come with all what it all it just come with too much stuff. But it'll come. Hello? Just do the work. I was a pastor four years before somebody called me pastor. And then when they called me pastor, I didn't want them to call me pastor. Leave me alone. Reverend Ortega. No. There's only one reverend and that's Jesus. Hello? But yet he's called us to do this work. I wasn't ready. I remember a minister going ahead and laying hands on me and saying, uh, uh, I see that God has got a... a I, I, I'm, if, I, if, I, if it sounds like I'm making fun of it, it's because it's my life and I can make fun of it. Okay? And he was, I see that the Lord has, has called you to do great things and and then you, you're going to be sharing his word. And, and, and I'm, I'm there, I'm tearing. Oh, ball. And then he spoke a truth. He said, but you ain't ready yet. <laughs> he said, he got you in a time of preparation. That's what I looked at him like. Oh, okay. And that's what I'm telling you now too. You may feel disqualified. You may feel unprepared. You may feel whatever it is that you're feeling. Throw it out the window. Stop feeling and start doing. I'm done. No, it's not going to be easy. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, people are going to talk about you. But when it comes down to it, all you want to hear is, well done, my good and faithful sir. Uh, I ain't talking to you. I'm still talking to me. My challenge for you this week, then, is to try and see your work with fresh eyes. Try to set it. And try to see it as a gift that God has given to you instead of the curse that you just have to endure and live. See it as a gift. <sighs> because not everybody can get up at 4.30 in the morning and go to the gym. Because not everybody can go to the job that you go to and do the job that you do that God has given you. Not everybody can love the kids that you've got the way you love your kids. Because that work was assigned to you. Not everybody can glorify God the way God created you to glorify Him. See? He assigned it to you. Not to me. He's already given me my assignment. I just got to try to do what I'm supposed to do, even though it sucks sometimes. But maybe if I see it as a gift, my mind will change, and I can look forward to it, even at 4.30 in the morning. Come on, somebody. 
And if that doesn't work for you, then I want you to consider this other truth. Consider what it is that you have been assigned to do for work. Consider it that Jesus is your boss. <laughs> Next time you pick up a phone and you're on that customer service line, instead of saying, what? What do you want? Think to yourself and say, how can I help you? Jesus. What can I do for you today? Jesus. What it would look like if you was your boss? How would you work? How would you? I, <laughs> okay, I got three minutes. I'm done. How would it change the way you do work? Would you, would you be like, okay, that's good enough? Would you be like, I'm going to take a nap now because my boss ain't around? <laughs> Can I tell you, Jesus is always around. Would you take a nap if he was in the room with you and you know you had work to do? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, yeah, he is in the room with you. He's called the Holy Ghost. And he's always with you. And the promise is that he'll never leave you. So if you're not working when you're supposed to be working, you're supposed to be doing it for him because he's your boss, then you let him down, my good and faithful ones. What if the only opinion that really mattered was his? How would your work change? How would it improve? And with all that in mind, one of the wisest decisions, one of the wisest decisions that we can ever make that relates to work. One of the wisest decisions. Lean in. Lean in. Because this is it. This is it. We're done. We're done. We're going to close for the fifth time. Lean in. One of the wisest decisions that you can make when it comes to work is to work. <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. That is the smartest thing that you can do. When you got work to do, do the work. Work has been with us from the very beginning and is not going away anytime soon, so long as time exists. Let's enter into our work with diligence, persistence, empowered by the Holy Ghost as we trust the all-knowing God that he knows what we're doing. Can you please stand that he knows what he's doing. We are still trying to figure it out. My apologies. <sighs> Told you I'd be done. Challenge is simple this week. For me. You can take it too if you want. But so long as there's work to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to work six days. I'm going to find a way to rest on the seventh. I'm going to keep that Sabbath. But my Sabbath isn't to sleep. My Sabbath is to worship God. Don't be confused. Whether the Eagles win or lose, it don't make me no mind. Because I ain't preparing for a championship ring because they ain't going to increase my paycheck. But I am preparing for eternity which is a whole lot better than, than a paycheck. Are you with me? So what is it? What is it that you have to work? Don't try to do it all at once. Don't, 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 try, to, don't, don't, don't try to fix it all. There's little areas of your life that God wants you to start with. Like this little baby Chloe over there. She's got to learn how to crawl before she can walk. Got to scoop first, right? Y'all remember that, right? They got to do that little scoop thing. And they got to do that crawl thing. Then they got to do that fall thing because they don't even really walk. They just stand and fall. Right? Why not do that? Find out what that one thing is. And then once you master that, then move on to something else. If you can handle a couple things, do a couple things. But don't try to... Don't, don't, don't go home right now and dump everything in your cupboard 
and in your refrigerator and throw it out or give it away because you know that you got to eat better. So you're going to go to the store and buy and buy those groceries. No, just start with a salad. I don't eat salad, so I'm definitely not talking to me. Right? But start making just one better choice today. Then make two better choices tomorrow. Let that be the word. Cook. Don't eat out. Mm. Again, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. Wait, where's my wife? I'm actually talking to her. Anyway. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for today, Lord God. I thank you for, for, for how mighty and awesome you are. I thank you, Lord God, that you're the one that empowers us to do all these things. I thank you, Lord, that we've been here in this place and you've just been trying to listen to the word that you would have for us today. I thank you, Lord, that your word comes in such a manner, in such a way, that we can use it in a practical way. Let us leave this place today, Lord God, making better choices. Let us leave this place today, Lord God, with a mind change of what it is to work. And Lord, and I admit, Lord, that we don't always want to work. And often, we do not look forward to it. But please, Lord, Help us see work as the gift that you have given and empowered us to do. In all and all, let the glory be yours and the reward be ours. In Jesus' name, God's people said, amen. If you received anything from the Lord, go ahead and give him a shout of praise or praise.